Taking a look at the trading week beginning November 14th, I point to Sunday the 14th because we actually have some decent Chinese data coming out Sunday evening. We're looking back at a week where all four major U.S. indices ended their win streaks. You had the Dow reach all-time highs, but hit its first down week in the previous six, and I'm including last week in that. Same thing with the S&P minus the new all-time highs, first down week in the previous six. NASDAQ, same thing, no new all-time highs, first down week in the previous six. And then the Russell hit its first down week in the previous five. Again, I'm including last week in that. So is this a market downturn, a pause in the rally? Or is it actually just a correction, maybe turning into a bear market? We won't know the answer to that by the end of next week. But when you look at some of the data that we got, as we wind down earnings seasons, we got very strong CPI figures. We got a Michigan sentiment that hit a 10-year low. The market momentum to the downside is the first thing you want to watch next week. Does it have momentum to the downside? Or was this just a bad data, slowly ending earnings week of pause? to the overall bull market. Seasonals are good, growth projections look good. We won't know until the weeks play along. Now also, we're worried about yields in general and we have Fed speakers again next week. And we're also looking for any news we can get on the potential filling of the Fed jobs, including whether there's a renomination of Fed Chair Jer Jerome Powell or whether he's replaced. Now in terms of speakers, we got Fed Presidents Thomas Barkin from Richmond, Raphael Bostic from Atlanta, Esther George from Kansas City, and Mary Daly from San Francisco. And then I mentioned maybe we'll get some heads up on whether Jerome Powell is going to be reappointed or whether some of these empty slots are going to get filled in by whom. Now next week, it's an interesting week of earnings. We have Baidu, NVIDIA, Cisco Systems, Intuit, Workday, Tyson Foods, but also big a retail week. We've got Alibaba, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, JD.com, Target. Ross Stores, Bath and Body Works, Kohl's and Foot Locker, a total of 215 companies reporting with only 14 of those being S&P components, only three of those being Dow components, but a really good cross-section of the U.S. economy and a couple of those Chinese names I mentioned, especially the retail names are going to be very important because next week we also get U.S. retail sales. So speaking of data, Chinese year-over-year -year housing prices, industrial production, and retail sales through October, along with their October unemployment rate, will be happening Sunday night. Monday, quiet day data-wise. Tuesday, August UK employment change and September unemployment rate. China year-over-year -year foreign direct investment. And then the big data of the week, EU second quarter final GDP and U.S. October retail sales figures, again, along with those retail earnings. We also get U.S. NAHB housing index, industrial production, and business inventories, but retail sales carries that big weight. Now, November 17th, which is Wednesday, UK, Canada, and EU final inflation data for October, as well as US October housing starts and building permits. Thursday the 18th, jobless claims, of course, in the US, November Philly Fed index, and then the October conference board's leading index. And then that evening in the UK, GFK Consumer Confidence for November. And then wrapping up the week on Friday, quiet except for October retail sales in the UK and Canada, as well as Canada's new housing price index for October.